Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be discussing how you don't owe any debts. Now, before we go ahead and get into today's video, please go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss another one of my videos, and make sure that you like the video and drop a comment below to let me know what you found valuable today in today's video. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, if many of you didn't know or don't know, pursuant to 28 U.S.C. Um, 3002, the United States is defined as a corporation. So if you see here, pursuant to 28 U.S.C. Code 3002, in the definition section, the definition defines the United States. That's very important. The United States. Number 15, it says the United States means a, a federal corporation an agency, department, commission, board, or other entity of the United States or an instrumentality of the United States. So um, right here is the very first place that I started. Um, you may start your studies and research elsewhere. However, this is where I started at. So um, defining the U.S. as a, a corporation was very pertinent in my studies. Why? Well, um, since Title 28 U.S.C. 3002 defines the United States as a federal corporation, that means that it's, it's not a government, it's not any type of uh, judiciary procedural section. Any of that does not apply to um, this Title 15 2002, right? So by the United States being a corporation, it makes you start to think different. The United States of America is the United States, not, not not the United States of America, allow me to um, go ahead and clarify, the United States, and that's why I said here the United States, is that's going to be pertinent. So the United States is foreign to America. So not the United States of America, but the United States. See, we're defining the United States as a corporation. We're not defining the United States of America as a corporation. So the United States itself is foreign to America. This is why when you are going through the process of um, getting your American national status, this matters so much because with the United States being foreign to America, um, you're from the land, um, you're from North America, you're from the land of North America. However, when they went in and incorporated the United States, they made the United States a corporation. So that's getting into what I was going to say here. So the United States is a corporation not the United States of America, right? So corporations can only interact and do business with another corporation. And this is why they came up with the straw man. So if you're not familiar with the straw man, we'll get into that a bit later in this video, or I'll drop another video maybe sometime later on the channel. So let's go ahead and continue. Now also with 28 US Code 3002, it defines in number 10, it defines a person to include a natural person that's including in the in oh sorry including an individual Indian, a corporation, a partnership, an un, an unincorporated uh, association, a trust. So 28 USC 3002 is defining a person to be a trust, a natural person, or an estate, or any other public or private entity including a state or local government or an Indian tribe. So now that you've defined or you know that as defined, the United States is a um, corporation and you know that a natural person um, or a person includes a natural person, you then want to be asking yourself, how can a natural person be a citizen to a corporation? So we all know what a corporation is. Essentially, a corporation is a piece of paper so how can a natural person you and i of being living human breathing flesh how can we be corporations of a piece of paper so that's very um important to start to research and study and it may open your mind up especially for those of us who are new to consumer law so what i do is i break down consumer law in an easy digestible way for you to understand and i i don't do so much as to talk over your head and i try to break it down to you all in layman's terms um i've been asked here lately for um for studies and um, different things of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and point out a few um, pertinent dates here um, on the channel. So in December the 26th, I'm sorry, on December 26, 1933, 
um, 49 Statute 3097 Treaty Series 881, the Convention of Rights and Duties of States, stated Congress, so United States Congress, replaced the statutes with international law. And what that did is it placed all states under in international law. So now all states that... um that um are in the United States of America are now under international law. Um and a lot of you will find that um helpful especially when you are speaking about status correction. So on December the 9th, 1945, um, the International Organization Immunities Act, um what that did is it really uh, sorry, relinquished every public office of the United States to the United Nations. So that happened on December the 9th, 1945. Another um, important thing to make note of is uh, pursuant to 22 CFR 92.12 through 92.31 uh, FR heading or the foreign relationship, it states that an oath is required to take office. So, um, with any type of uh, lawyers, judges, um, etc., they are required to uh, have an oath to take office. So that's going to be important as well when you start to get into your studies. When it comes to, again, how us as consumers or natural people don't owe debt, it's written in, in the law itself. So uh, pursuant to 18 U.S. Code 8, it states that the... Um, all of your obligations are the, uh-oh, all of your bills are the obligation of the United States. Let me get back to where I was. Here we go. Okay, so the term obligation or other security interests, uh, sorry, other security of the United States includes all bonds, certificates of indebtedness, national bank currencies, Federal Reserve notes, Federal Bank Reserve notes, coupons, and coupons, remittance coupons, refer it back the debt back to the United States, uh United States notes, treasury notes, gold certificates, uh silver certificates, fractional notes, certificates of deposits. It says here quote unquote, not quote unquote, but here in black and white it's the law. Bills, obligation of the United States, checks, drafts for money uh drawn up or upon authorized officers of the United States, stamps and other representatives of value of whatever denomination issued under any act of Congress and canceled United States stamps. So Congress let you know here in black and white, pursuant to 18 U.S.C. 8, all, um, all of your obligations, bills, coupons are the obligation of the United States. So now that we're coming into how you don't owe debt, I know you, you're like, okay, I know I don't owe debt. How do I get rid of, rid of it or, you know, things of that nature. But we're going to go ahead and cover that quite soon here. But um, for Title 8 USC 1481, this title um, states, and going back to um, the previous slide, this title states, once an oath of office is taken, citizenship is relinquished, thus you become a foreign foreign entity, agency, or state. So that means that every public office is a foreign state. That includes all political um, divisions, such as every single court in the court's personnel. They are considered a separate foreign entity. So under Title 22 USC, the Foreign Relations and um, Intercourse, that's Chapter 11, that identifies all public officials as foreign agents. So it's just um, whether you know that all public officials are foreign agents. They're not lawyers or judges. But again, let's move on to the purpose of today's video, the Emergency Bacon Act, and how you essentially don't owe any debt. So on March the 9th, 1933, President uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt um he actually went in and, and declared that there, well, the Emergency Banking Act was uh, passed on March the 9th. But what happened was during this time frame, the America was in a Great Depression, right? So um, what Franklin uh, Roosevelt did is he went in and he declared um, that America should have a four day national banking holiday. Um, they were going to go ahead and keep all the banks um closed until Congress could act. So what they were trying to do or what the Emergency Banking Act did was attempt to stabilize the banking system. So the Great Depression had um, America in a frenzy and they were trying to 
essentially bail themselves out of um, the Great Depression and try to what they call, quote unquote, stabilize the banking system. So during the four day uh, national holiday, the federal government, they were supposed to inspect all banks, reopen those banks that were um, sufficiently solvent and then reorganize those that could not be saved and then close those that were beyond repair. So what the banking act did was it allowed 12 federal reserve banks to uh, issue additional currency on um, good assets so that banks uh, could be reopened to meet every legitimate call and those legitimate calls were for them to have extra money in rotation right so once they got all of this extra money in rotation what they did next was it was quite crazy so a month later what franklin um roosevelt did on april 5th 1933 he signed what is seen here which is the executive order um number 16102 and what he did was he criminalized the possession of all monetary gold by any type of individuals partners associations or corporations right so he went in and made it um criminal for them to have um over a certain amount of gold gold certificates bullions he said uh you had to turn it over before may 1st 1933 they wanted all the gold coins this is gold bullion they wanted the gold bullion they wanted gold certificates um they wanted it all to go back into the uh, federal banks and the uh, federal banking reserve so because um president uh due to prank i'm uh, sorry due to president uh franklin Roosevelt's um, confidence, right? Americans, what they did was, or consumers, they went ahead and they returned to Franklin uh, Roosevelt in the federal banking system. They returned over $1 billion in gold coin, gold bullions, and gold certificates. Um, and he also made it... Um, he also made it unlawful for them to even have over a certain amount. So they uh, definitely had... Um, psyched up the public to make them think that and they still do this to this day but that's another video for another time they psyched up the americans to think that you know um what they were doing was right was was turning over all of their gold bullions coins this was essentially their money and you just turned it over to the government but anyway um later a few years later in november of 1936 that's when the government went ahead and started to issue the first social security numbers and what they started doing at that time is creating what is known today as our SSTQ trust using that uh social security number and our birth certificates as well so just a bit of a history on that so here you can see originally this is a an original social security card or number that was issued in 1936 it contains the verbiage account number your social security number can be used to access what is known again as your SESTQ trust account in which you are the rightful beneficiary owner to it because it was created in your straw man your straw man is essentially your all caps name and that all caps name or that straw man was created using your birth certificate and your social security number so this account number uh does tie back to that SESTQ um Yes, that's the Q trust account. And more on that. Now, um, there are two ways to discharge your debts. On the public side, you can accept your remittance coupons for value or you can send in a billing error dispute. I go into detail um, step by step in my course run that remedy exactly how you can be successful with that process on the public side because I have been asked that as well. Can this process be done on the public side? Yes. Um, when it comes to you being on the private side, my suggestion is that you do your research you study you do your research and you study i am not a lawyer i do not give legal legal advice and the information contained in this video and on this channel is for educational purposes only now what i can say is that you do have the rights to the proceeds of the account or the sesdq trust account but what you don't want to do is you don't want to try to cash it in or you don't want to try to use irs forms to walk off a car lot with the car that has been a lot of um 
a lot I, I have been combated a lot here on not only my channel but um in other places as well that you guys are telling me or asking me do i teach rs forms can you walk um can you use a, a rs form to get a car can you walk off a car lot can you get the title to your car you guys are asking how do you cash in your sesta trust trust account listen it, it, all of that is not the correct process i do not teach it i will not be teaching you any ways for you to go to jail because you will go to jail for attempting to carry out processes such as these you have to study and know the law i'm not st stating that it can't be done however when it comes to you being on the public side attempting to use irs forms trying to cash in to secure trusts trying to walk off car lots and get titles to your cars on the public side you will go to jail for attempting to carry out that process so let everybody know. So Diddy Cream said that. I know y'all y'all tell people whatever y'all want to tell them. But hey, I know I just got a little jig at the end of this video. But I just want to let y'all know you will go to jail. Anyways, I want to thank you all for tuning in today for my video. Make sure that you shop my website, www.cdcream.com, and download your Billing Era Bible. The Billing Era Bible, it gives you uh, templates and templates for the affidavit of truth you have a cease and desist template a cover letter template in that billing error bible and it walks you through how to carry out the process of a billing error dispute again be sure to like this video subscribe to my channel turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss another video and i will see you all in the next uh video bye